Hello and welcome to another video on Azure Data Factory. My name is Mitchell Pearson and today we're going to be taking a look at rule-based mapping as well as the this function. One of the cool things about Azure Data Factory is the fact that we have this ability to do schema drift or late binding. This is something that we really didn't have in other ETL tools going back historically in things like SSIS. In SSIS, if you, you define your schema in advance, and if that schema changes, the package breaks and you got to go in there and fix it. However, today I want to take a look at how can we build a data flow within Azure Data Factory that is designed to handle column names changing and new columns coming in. And the way we're going to do that is with these two different things that I've talked about, which is rule-based mapping and the this function. So let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at this. Like always, I've already started a pretty basic pipeline here where I have a source and I have a sync. And I'll talk really quickly and briefly about the kind of overall setup. The source is going to be coming from this Azure Blob rule-based mapping source. And this source right here is pointing to really no file. I'll set this up in our source within the data flow. But you'll also notice that under the schema, I have not imported the schema. Right, so the trick to really making this schema drift work is we don't want to define our schema in advance because our schema is going to be late binding. And our destination, I'm simply going to point to a table called retail sales and we'll take a look at that table here in a little bit and kind of understand the mapping scenario and what we're trying to accomplish. But once again, I'm not importing the schema in advance. So with that being set up and understood, what I can do is over here, we can take a quick look at our retail sales table. So I'm doing, if I were to do a select star from retail sales, I just have a couple of very basic columns here. Date sold, customer ID, first, last, city, state, and amount. And I'm going to be loading a file into this table right here. And we're going to let the mapping happen automatically. So under sales data, You'll notice under sales data, we're doing allow schema drift is turned on. I'm pointing to that data set I showed you just a moment ago, pointing to my blob storage account. Under source options, I'm using a data set parameter to essentially apply a wildcard path. And this is going to use the file name that I wanted to use. So sales underscore file one, sales underscore file two. Under projection, you'll notice once again, there is no schema here. So we're doing that late binding type scenario. And then if we go over to our sync, our sync is set up the same way. We're pointing to our Azure SQL database to that table. We have allow schema drift turned on, and then we're allowing inserts. Under mapping, you'll notice that we're doing auto mapping. And so this is the basic setup for schema drift. And what I wanna do is simply load a basic file into our sync destination. And the file that I'm going to load, we can actually come over here and take a look at sales file one. And with sales file one, if we come in here and actually edit and take a look at this blob, we'll see that it matches the destination perfectly. So date sold, customer ID, first, last, city, state, amount. And then I have an extra column here as well. So date sold, everything matches. Now, our scenario is we're going to load this one and that's going to work pretty well. But then when we go over to sales file two, that one has different column headers. So instead of customer ID, it has customer. Instead of uh, first, it has first name and last name. Instead of date sold, it has sold date. And so the scenario here is you have different files coming from different vendors, but we want to do all of that in a single data flow. We want a single data flow to be able to handle different files with different column names. If one file has more columns than another file, like sales file one, which had you know, this new column that we appended to the end, we wanted to send that through as well. Therefore, when the schema changes and as our requirements within our applications change, Azure Data Factory can handle that without us having to continually manage that development effort and update those data flows. So if we go back over to our data factory, what we're going to do is go ahead and run this data flow via a pipeline that we've already created. 
And so I'll go ahead and debug that very quickly here. And I'm going to go ahead and load for the first one. Cells file one. That pipeline has ran successfully. And we see that all of our data was mapped automatically. Now we did run into a single problem here with date sold. And the problem is that in my table, this is a date, but because it's coming from a CSV file, it's coming in as a text and it's not able to map it correctly. So that is something that we can easily fix and we can easily resolve with a derived column transform. So I'll go ahead and add in a derived column here. And all I'm going to do is take the column that's coming in and convert that to a date. But this actually presents quite a bit of a problem for us, right? Because when I go to add this right here, let me go ahead and give this a name of date sold. And when I say I want to convert the date sold that's coming in, we'll notice right here that there is no input schema, right? We don't know what columns are going to be coming into this data flow because this is a late binding scenario. It's a schema drift type scenario where we don't know or define the schema in advance. So how do we do this? Well, we can still actually convert those data types. So I'll say, I'm gonna change this to a date, and then I can't just name it date sold, right? So what I can use is a function called by name. And what the by name function will do is it's going to search for a column that has this name, right? So it's gonna search for it. And then if that, that column comes down the, the stream of the data flow, it will return that value. And what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna convert that. We'll give it a format here. The format is going to be month, day, year, 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 year. And that's it, that's all we have to do. And then we'll say save and finish. So now, instead of running this again, we could actually just preview it right here in the data preview. And there we go, date sold, and we see that it has changed its data type. It's no longer a text, it's no longer a string. It is now a date data type. So we can now load that into our sync. So we know that the first file loaded without any problems. What I wanna do now is I wanna load the second file. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a debug operation again. This time we will load cells underscore file two. So I'll go ahead and click okay. Now the problem with this file is that the column names are different, but we wanna have a single data flow that can handle both scenarios. So first I wanna show you the problem, then I'm gonna show you how to quickly solve this problem. If we go back over to Management Studio and we run our code and we zoom in, we'll notice that city for these new records, so the, the file only has about five records in it. City, state, and amount, they map without any problem. However, these other columns are ignored because the customer, the first name, the last name, and the date sold are named differently in that other file. So if we go back over to data factory, I can show you very quickly how to set this up. And we do this with a select transform. So I'm gonna click here, we're going to add in a new transform. There we go. And then I'm gonna turn off auto mapping here and we're gonna add a new rule-based mapping. This happens automatically since we're in a schema drift or a late binding type scenario. And so now we have to build in some logic. The first thing we're gonna do is use the locate function. The locate function is essentially the equivalent of like a find or a search function. It's going to look for a string within a string, and if it finds that string, it returns the starting position of that string. So we're going to be looking for first, and we're going to look for first within the name function. The name function is going to essentially search all of the column names that are coming through, and if it finds first in any of those column names, then it will return the starting position. And so we're gonna put in some logic here that says if it's not equal to zero. What does that mean? It means that if locate finds the string first within any column name, it's going to give us the starting position of that string. If that string is greater than zero, if it's not equal to zero, then it exists. That's what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and copy this out because we're gonna reuse this logic over and over again. Save and finish. And so if that occurs, take that column, whatever it is, and name that column first name. Or actually, we're gonna name this one just first. There we go. 
So if you find any column name that has first in it, name it first. So we're renaming these column names dynamically through rule-based mapping. So we'll add another mapping here. Remember I copied that code, so we can do this a lot quicker here. We're gonna map any column that comes through and has the name last. We're gonna map that to our last column. And then we are going to do two more here. So I repeated that process for date. Anything that comes in as date, we're gonna map that to sold date. And anything that comes in as customer, we're going to map to customer ID. I actually need to correct that. So anything that comes in as customer will be mapped to customer ID. Now we'll go ahead and run this again, of course, from our pipeline. I'll tell it we wanna go ahead and debug this. Sales underscore file two. Pause the video and we'll come back as soon as this has completed. And this time we will notice that those four columns have been mapped correctly. All right, so let's take a look at the results. We have our first run, we have the second run here. And then if we go just a little bit further down, we will notice Oh, I think I mapped this one to sold date. So <laughs> we'll fix that one in the derived column. But you'll notice that the customer ID, the first name and the last name are now being mapped where they were not before, but the city, the state, and the amount are not being mapped. This is where the this function comes in. Remember we talked about, we're gonna talk about the rule-based function and then we're going to review the this function. So this is very important because, let's go back to our data flow. Because we're doing rule-based mapping within a select statement or within a select transform, only what you identify within the select transform is able to pass down and go continue on throughout the data flow. So what the select transform does inherently is it allows you to choose all of the inputs that are coming through and choose which inputs will be allowed to continue passing through. And what we've essentially done down here at the bottom, we said, these are the only inputs that will be allowed to pass through, right? So let's fix date sold so that one will map correctly next time. There we go. And we're going to click save and finish. Now, what I could do to make this work, since we know we have three additional columns, is we could just add three additional mappings and then everything is mapped, even though the other ones never change, and it will work. However, that will not work when we get into a situation where we have new columns that come in in the future, right? So let's say that right now all of the files that we receive have seven columns. But in the future, our applications require an additional column. So now we have eight or now we have nine. I don't want to have to come back into this data flow every single time a new column is created and have to continually maintain this and add additional mappings. So that presents a little bit of a problem. If we don't want to keep adding mappings and rule-based mappings in the future, but we want all of our columns to be able to pass through, what do we do? That is where the this function comes in. Let me show you a really cool trick. I'm gonna go ahead and click on add mapping. This time, we're going to create a situation where it says if it does not equal this, then do this, all right? So let's go ahead and create this condition very quickly here. I'm gonna say if the name of the column coming in is let's say not equal to Mitchell SQL, right? So if it's not equal to Mitchell SQL, then just return the name of the column, right? Just return the, the column. So every column that doesn't match that criteria and doesn't match the previously defined rules, return that column. And that is where this function right here comes in. This is essentially just going to say, whatever that value is, return that value. So we can click save and finish down here at the end. And then we say to ourselves, well, we wanna test this out. We wanna make sure that this is working correctly. So we'll debug this again. Once again, we're going to do this with file two, which remember had different column names than what our destination had. So we'll go ahead and click okay. All right, our pipeline has completed, our data flow has completed. And so now the moment of truth is going to be coming back over to Management Studio, running that statement again and seeing if everything got mapped and when we come down to the very bottom down here we see that now everything has been mapped irregardless of the fact that the columns don't match exactly right even though the columns in this file are first name last name customer and sold date we've mapped them all 100 percent accurately to this through two different things rule-based mapping and then the this function now there's one more thing i want to show you before this video is over 
And that's another way of taking advantage of the this function. So if we go into our derived column here, and I go into the derived column settings, remember earlier I did a very quick data conversion on the date sold, and we turned that into a date. You can also do pattern matching here. So I'm gonna do a add a column pattern. This is almost like an if statement, right? So if you find a column that matches this pattern, then do this thing. And it will only do this thing if it finds a column that matches. So for example, I'm gonna write a very simple, very quick expression here that says, remember the name function here is gonna check all of the column names coming through. If the name equals, let's say state, okay? So if the column equals state, then we click save and finish. And if it does equal state, then let's create a new column here and we'll call this something like state abbreviation. All right, so if the column coming through equals state, let's create a new column called state abbreviation. Then we're going to enter an expression. And what I wanna do in the expression is I want to only take the first two characters of the state. And so the way that we can do that is by obviously using a function We'll just search for a very common function, something like left exists in practically every programming language. And then I want to pass in the column name. Well, if the column name doesn't exist, if it's not in the input schema, we can either reference it by using by name or we can use the this function. So I'll do dollar sign, dollar sign, which essentially says return the value of that column and then we're going to only return the left two characters of that value that's coming in from that column. So then we'll go ahead and do save and finish. And then let's check this out. Let's see how this works. We don't need to run the data flow because our destination doesn't have a state abbreviation anyway. So we'll come over to data preview and we will do a refresh operation. And if we scroll all the way over to the right, we should see that new column right here and we can see that for Florida, it's FL. For Georgia, Georgia it's GE. California, Idaho, Indiana, so on and so forth. We have that state abbreviation here. And the way we were able to extract that data from that column, even though that column, when we're in development, is not even in the data flow yet because we're using this late binding scenario, this schema drift scenario, is we were able to use that this function. So that is pretty cool. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned a lot of stuff. It's jammed packed with a lot of different things in really a short amount of time. But I wanted to introduce you to rule-based mapping and then the this function. I've seen the this function in a couple of different videos and I just didn't quite understand it. And I think it was my fault for not really paying attention even though it was there. So I wanted to try to help and provide a little bit of clarity there. All right, thank you for watching this video. If it wasn't an utter and complete disaster, please feel free to hit the like button. Uh, if not, do not hit that other button, and I'll see you in the next one.